Welcome to Finished Work International Ministries, a ministry that is on the cutting edge, changing lives around the world. As you let God in today and apply the word, expect a divine encounter and supernatural transformation. It is impossible for you to be defeated when you have the revelation of the will of God. It is impossible for situations to subdue you when you walk in understanding of what God is saying to you. Let the finished work of Jesus determine what you pray. When God is your source, you don't look back. You keep looking forward. You keep trusting. God, I trust you. Here's Apostle Faith Man Obueda. You're welcome to the third Sunday of Infallible Proof and Greater Works. And today I'll be looking at the laws of miracles. The laws of miracles. If you want to see infallible proofs, the miraculous is part of it. Miracles are the proof of God's involvement. Miracles are the proof that God is involved. And miracles are indications of the expression of God's goodness. Miracles are the indication of the expression of God's goodness. And one of the ways we can see more manifestation of the goodness of God is to trust him for the miraculous. Miracles are the proof of the manifestation of the ability of God. I said miracles are the proof of the manifestation of the ability of God. Miracles are the proof of the manifestation of the ability of God. Miracles are supernatural in origin. I said miracles are supernatural in origin. Miracles are supernatural in origin. Miracles can be experienced but cannot be explained. You cannot explain a miracle but you can experience a miracle. You, you cannot explain how the Red Sea parted into two. How many people could Okay, this is the principle that was applied, and let's go and try it somewhere else. You cannot explain a miracle, but you can experience a miracle. Miracle is a supernatural experience that exceeds natural interpretation. Miracles are supernatural experience that exceed natural interpretation. You know, let's say, for instance, someone just died and they were taking him or her to, for a funeral to be buried. And suddenly there was a manifestation of the power of God and the person came back to life. That is a miracle. The doctor confirmed him dead. They got a death certificate that this person is already dead. But you see, the miraculous defies logic. The miraculous exceeds logic. Logic sometimes is connected with statistic, but miracles exceed logic. You, you, you can't reason it out. You cannot reason out a miracle. You, you can't be able to explain how it happened, but you have the experience. So today we're looking at the laws of miracles. The first law in this teaching is anything is possible. Anything is possible. That's the first law. Anything is possible. If you have the revelation that anything is possible, 
you cannot be intimidated by any projects. If you have the revelation that anything is possible, anything, anything, anything is possible. You know, there are people that said, well, I, if you could do this, you can do that, but this you cannot do because you have the limited resources, not in the realm of the miracles. In the realm of the miraculous, there are no limitations. Hmm. I like this. In the realm of the miraculous, there are no limitations. In the realm of the miraculous, there is nothing like impossibility. The word impossibility does not exist in the realm of the miraculous. The word impossibility does not exist in the realm of the miraculous because impossibility will be swallowed up by the force of the miraculous. Impossibility will be swallowed up by the force of the miraculous. This is why those who believe in miracle, you cannot conclude on their situation. It is impossible to conclude on the situation of any man or woman that believes in the miraculous. You cannot. No doctor can conclude it. The doctor may say she has two weeks to die, but because she believes in the miraculous, she went ahead to live for more 30 years. The attorney said there is no way you can win this case. Because she believes in the miraculous, there was a supernatural intervention. The miraculous exceed natural understanding, but can be experienced in the natural realm. So look at what happened here. So when you understand that anything is possible, that's the first law of miracles. If you're going to see miracles, the first law is anything is possible. Anything. When they said, oh, you can't get that money for your business. It's a billion dollars. You can't finance that business. That is what they said. But the truth of the matter is that anything is possible. In the realm of the miraculous, there is no frustration. Hmm. Yes, you know why? That realm is where faith in God operates. That realm is the where faith in God. God operates. So the first law is anything is possible. I like us to look at Mark Gospel, uh, Mark Gospel chapter nine, Mark Gospel chapter nine verse twenty-three, and Mark Gospel chapter nine verse twenty-three said, "Jesus said unto him, If thou canst believe." All things are possible to him that believeth. If thou can believe, all things are possible to him that believes. So when it comes to seeing manifestation of the miraculous, you have to be an aggressive believer. You believe and you don't change your mind. <laughs> you believe and you don't change your mind. It doesn't matter what they said. It doesn't matter what the report said. The statistic have said, I believe God that all things are possible. That understanding will exonerate you from depression and frustration. That understanding that with God, all things are possible will exonerate you from depression and frustration. That understanding that with God all things are possible. So he said that if God can believe, he said all things are possible. I like us to look at John chapter 11 verse 40. John gospel chapter 11 verse 40. Look at John gospel 11 verse 40. And Jesus said unto her, said I unto thee that if thou wouldest believe, thou shouldest see the glory of God. Lazarus was dead for that was the fourth day and he said if thou can believe 
If thou can believe, you will see the glory of God. Believing comes from the revelation knowledge of what God has done, what God can do, and what God is doing. I want to establish that again. I said believing. For you to believe, it comes from the revelation knowledge of what God has done, what God can do, and what God is doing. What God has done, what God can do, and what God is doing. What God has done, what God can do, and what God is doing. And that should be the basis of what you believe. What God has done. If God has raised the dead before, he's going to raise the dead again. He has done it before. Hebrews 13 verse 8. Jesus is the same yesterday, today, and forever. Jesus is the same. Yesterday, today, and forever. So that for you, for your belief to be strong, when you hear an Abraham believe God, he believed that revelation of what God has done in the past, what God is doing, and what God can do. So when you have that concept of what God has done, that understanding of what God has done, what God can do, and what God is doing, it will accept establish a belief system that will lead you into a life of the miraculous. It will help to establish a belief system. God has raised the dead before. God has planted the race before. He has multiplied the laws before. He walked on the sea before. He raised the dead before. He cleansed the leper before. That same God is at work. When you have that revelation, your conviction cannot be distracted. Nothing can distract your conviction. Now you know. And because you know, you establish. So it said here, if you can believe, all things are possible. So the first law of the miraculous that we're sharing today is the law of anything is possible. Anything is possible. So stop putting limitation on your vision. Stop putting limitation on your dreams. Stop putting limitation on your finances. Stop putting limitation on your job, on your life. Don't say, I don't know where the resources will come from. With God, all things are possible. With God, all things are possible. You're confessing that scripture. You believe that scripture. You're walking towards that scripture. And then you begin to notice that your faith is rising for the miraculous. Law number two, God's word can create anything. God's word can create anything. Wow, oh, I like that. The word of God can create anything. The first thing we need to establish on this principle is the integrity of God's word. I like that. The integrity of God's word. It means the word of God cannot fail. <laughs> the integrity of the word, it means God's word cannot fail. And then the authority of the word, it means the word of God can change anything. The integrity of the word, the authority of the word, the word of God has integrity. It means the word cannot fail. And there is the authority of the word of God that when we speak God's word with expectation, there will be a release of the miraculous. When you speak the word of God with expectation, let me say this to you. Don't ever speak God's word without expectation. Expectation is foundational when it comes to experiencing the miraculous. Expectation. So there is the law of expectation. But that law of expectation works with the law of declaration. The law of expectation works with the law of declaration. So for you to make a declaration, for you to declare, you have to believe that there's going to be a manifestation. The law of expectation works with the law of declaration. These are powerful laws. Expectation. I expect it. Write down your expectation. 
and declare your expectation. Then get ready for manifestation. Write down your expectation. Then declare your expectation. Get ready for manifestation of your expectation. Write down your expectation. The law of expectation. When you begin to expect, you see, when you are, in ex when you are expecting, your hope is alive. One of the ways you sustain your hope is when you have expectation. I said one of the ways you sustain your hope is when you have expectation. People without expectation can easily be discouraged. People without expectation can easily give up. Expectation is the reason why you're going to continue even when things are not working out. Mm -hmm. Expectation, I have an expectation that this thing is going to happen. I have an expectation that this money is coming. I have an expectation that I'm debt free. I have an expectation that all things are going to work together for my good. I have an expectation that what God spoke to me is going to happen. Because when you have an expectation, your hope is sustained. This is important. Quitting your expectation can be the reason for depression. One of the reasons why most people are depressed today is because they have given up on the expectation. They have given up. They are tired. Oh, it's not going to happen. I don't think this is going to work out. They are saying it themselves. Oh, this is not looking good. I don't think we're going to have the victory. No. Don't lose your expectation because of a delay of your desired manifestation. Don't lose your expectation because of the delay of your desired manifestation. Don't lose your expectation. Don't. Don't lose your expectation because sometimes people lose expectation. Uh, now, I want to show you the scripture when it comes to expectation. Let's go to Romans chapter 4. In Romans chapter 4, glory be to God. Romans chapter 4, I'd like us to look at verse 17. And then we're going to read them. In Romans 4 from verse 17, he said, As it's written, I've made thee the father of many nations. When God was telling Abraham, I've made thee the father of many nations. And before whom he believed, even God who put in the dead. Why did he say, I've made the father of many nations? He spoke that word brought expectation to Abraham. Whenever God gives you a vision, a prophetic vision of something beautiful, something good, you know what he's doing? He is creating an expectation for you, which he expects you to step into as a manifestation. Whenever God gives you a prophetic vision, of what is it? You know, sometimes people can just get frustrated. That's why I like to share this testimony. I've shared it before, but I want to share it again, just in relates to this subject I'm teaching. When the, the, the present facility we're using for our local church today, uh, many years ago, they gave us a place to just use, but they didn't sell it to us. And we wish the people could sell it to us. We wish they could have sell it to us. You know, then we're just believe in God, but the people never made a, uh, showed any interest that they are willing to sell. But one day the Lord gave me a vision, a prophetic vision. In that vision, a man of God came to our home and I said, man of God, can you come to our church and pray for us? And then this man of God came to our church and he asked me a question. He said, who owns this property? I wanted to tell him that it's been owned by one of our friends. And then my wife came in and told the man of God, God said he's going to give us this property in that vision. Then the man of God took a key and dropped in my hands. And then the vision vanished. The vision ended. 
Now, it took six years for me to see the manifestation of that vision I saw. Now, that vision was God creating expectation in me. Was God saying, hey, this should be your expectation. Because expectation sustains passion for moving in the right direction. I want to say that again. I said expectation sustains passion for moving in the right direction. Because when you have an expectation, it strengthens you mentally. It strengthens you emotionally. And it brings refreshing spiritually. Because you have an expectation. Because you have an expectation, you are strengthened mentally. You are strengthened emotionally. You are refreshed spiritually. You are being refreshed. So look at what God said to Abraham here. He said, I've made you the father of many nations. Before whom he believed. He told him, I've made you the father of many nations. Romans chapter 4, verse 17. As it is written, I've made you the father of many nations. Before whom he believed. I've made you. But in the natural, there was no manifestation. In the natural, there was no. You know why he gave him that prophetic word? To keep his expectation alive. Expectation. can take you where effort can take you to. Sometimes you're trying to make something happen. But if you have no expectation, you'll be discouraged. Discouragement is a proof of lost expectation. Wow, I like that. <laughs> I think someone need to tweet that. I said discouragement is a proof of lost expectation. Discouragement. Is a proof of lost expectation. She just lost her expectation. And then she became discouraged. She became frustrated because she lost expectation. But when, when there is expectation, there is joy. Expectation comes with joy. There is this joy you have as a person when you have expectation that everything is going to be all right. Everything is going to work out for my good. When you have that expectation, there is this joy. Oh my God, we are coming out of death. Hallelujah. I have the expectation that the Lord is going to supply all I need. Oh, this marriage is going to work out. I have an expectation that God is going to fix it. This business is going to grow. I have an expectation that it's going to, you know, because there is an expectation, your attitude has changed. Because you have an expectation. But without expectation, there will be a wrong manifestation of attitude that is not consistent with the will of God. So, so the law of expectation. In Hebrews, he said, Hebrews, thank you, Holy Ghost. Ah, ah God, that's the job of my spirit. Let me bring it out. In Hebrews chapter 11, verse 6. Wow. You know, sometimes trying to teach the word of God and I didn't think all of these things when I want to. I came here. <laughs> I don't. I don't have an idea. If someone told me, I was hey, this guy's gonna turn out. I said, oh, you don't mean it. I haven't heard this. <laughs> I have no idea. Hey, what is happening right now? I have no control over it. Hallelujah. So you just relax. I'm mean, taking it. Oh, huh? amen. Let that get a note from you. Now in Hebrews chapter eleven, verse six, look at what happened. But without faith, it's impossible to please Him. For he that cometh to God must believe. Expectation. <laughs> Are you ready for this today? <laughs> oh my God, you look at that scripture. That's powerful. He said, but without faith, it is impossible to please him. Then he said, for he that cometh to God must believe. Must believe. If you're coming to God, you need to have an expectation. Expectation. The breeding ground for the miraculous. Expectation. The breeding ground for the miraculous. Because expectation sustains 
your focus in the right direction. When you have an expectation, it sustains your focus in the right direction because you have an expectation. Wow, I have an expectation that Finish Rock International Ministry will be a global ministry, reaching people all the ends of the earth. Expectation, expectation, hallelujah. Because you have that expectation, you keep moving. Because expectation produces positive energy within you. Expectation is the key to emotional energy. Wow. <laughs> expectation produce positive energy within you and expectation is the key to emotional energy. You just see yourself going and you're wondering why is she going forward that way? Look at all the things that have happened to her. Look at all the distraction. Look at all the opposition. But she kept going. Look at all the crisis around her life. But she doesn't look like what she's going to. She has expectation. She has expectation. The reason why the other, fa the other fa uh, fellow gave up and quitted, there was no expectation. But she was going through all the storm and she kept going because there was expectation. He lost some money in business, but he kept moving forward because there is expectation. There is expectation. Expectation is the reason why you repeat for the second time. Expectation is the reason why you can start all over knowing that everything is going to be all right. Expectation. Expectation is the reason why you can overcome the spirit of suicide. You know why people commit suicide? Lost of expectation. Without expectation, people can drown their destiny. Without expectation, a person can drown their destiny because they look at themselves and say, this is the end of the world for me. I've come to the end of myself. Nothing is going to work out. Because there is no expectation. And that expectation is a product of revelation. Expectation is a product of revelation of God's word. When you have the revelation of God's word, it produces expectation. I'm talking to someone right now. And this is your word. You've got it. If you stay in expectation, you will come into restoration. Expectation will lead to restoration. <laughs> Loss of expectation may be the reason why things will not be restored. Wow. Someone just got an answer. You have been praying, oh God, give me an answer. Look at your answer. <laughs> it just came to you. You write down your answer. Right? If you have expectation, <laughs> they say you're laughing. <laughs> if you have an expectation, <laughs> you're going to have restoration. <laughs> Hallelujah. If you've got an expectation, you're going to have restoration. You cannot escape restoration if you have expectation. I'm telling you. Because expectation is an indication that you already have the proof of the house. Come on. Come on. I said expectation is an indication that you already have the proof of the harvest. Expectation is an indication that you already have the proof of the harvest. And what the enemy wants to do is to ruin your expectation. Is to take you out of the realm of expectation. Don't expect. It's not going to work out. It's not going to come back. Nothing is going to happen. It's a Forgotten matter. You know, Satan could preach. Satan could talk. Satan knows how to talk. I'm telling you. Satan talks. Oh, how does he talk? With wrong thoughts. Whenever wrong thoughts is landing your mind, Satan is talking. Whenever you notice any wrong thoughts, any wrong feeling, Satan is talking. He's trying to say something. He's trying to communicate something. It's like a salesman trying to make you buy something you don't want to buy, even when you don't like to buy it. He's trying to talk you into it. He's trying to tell you something. And then he's telling you, listen, it's not going to work out. All these things you're hearing, is not going to work out. But when you have expectation, you frustrate demonic, demonic communication. One of the ways you frustrate demonic communication, one of the ways you frustrate demonic Communication is to have an expectation 
that is consistent with the will of God is going to work out. Ah, it's going to work out. So we say expectation is a product of revelation. Expectation. If you refuse to quit, you will have the fruits. That's a word for someone right now. <laughs> if you refuse to quit, you will have the fruits. Because a lot of people quit when they are five miles or one mile away to the breakfast. Of course, I'm tired. I don't think I can handle this. I don't think I'm going to handle this. I don't think this is going to work out. I'm, I'm tired of being tired. I don't think I'm going to push this anymore. Just preach me a person, but I don't think I'm going to run with it. Let me say this to you. I was talking with someone yesterday, and she said something. It's a person for many years now. It has been difficult to excel. I said, I, I don't want you to put your energy on your struggle. I want you to put your energy on God's word. I don't want you to put your energy on your limitation. I want you to put your energy on what God can do. But you see, sometimes it's difficult for people to switch over because when someone is used to failure, used to negative experience, the tendency for that experience to determine their communication is always there. Except they start doing Romans chapter 12, verse 2. Wow, I like this. Except they start doing Romans chapter 12, verse 2. Don't be conformed to this world. Eh? We can read it this way. Don't be conformed to your negative experience, but be it transformed by the word of God as you can have better experience. Agreed? That, that's faith man translation. Agreed? Don't be conformed to your negative experience. <laughs> be it transformed with the word of God as you can create the experience you want. Because sometimes when people are used to setbacks, he used to frustration, used to pain. If they're not careful, they will always stick the pain. But you know what the Spirit of God wants to do here this morning? He's saying, I'm giving you a fresh expectation. Everything is going to be all right. I like that phrase so much. So I used to text it to my friends and partners. Everything is going to be all right. Everything is going to be all right. Everything. And so the the person just said that everything is going to be all right. Everything is going to be all right. And then it may look like everything is going bad. It's like the more you head it, it's like it's collapsing the more. But honey, listen to this. Your expectation is a proof that you will have your heart desire. Your expectation is a proof that you will have your heart desire. You know, sometimes it could be tough and you're, you're saying something, you know, you're looking at it and you're wondering, how is it going to happen? Let me say this. <laughs> if God have ever helped you before, giving you a testimony before, surprised you before, <laughs> fed you before, supported you before, he wants to repeat it. <laughs> If God have ever helped you before, supported you before, taken care of you before, he wants to help you. It doesn't matter the report you've had. Whether the doctor said, you have two days to leave, you have this, you have that. Yeah, okay. I'm going to believe God's report. God's report said, we're long life. I don't know how many of you were in the prayer service this morning when we were praying. We're praying some scriptures from Psalm 91. I think we need to go pray back those prayers again. Those, those prayers we had this morning. And one of the prayer points was, will long life will God satisfy me? Let me say this to you. There is someone, you're watching me. Your heart is broken. But if you have an expectation, it should be amended. If you have an expectation... That everything is going to be all right. You know what I use encouraging myself most of the time? Hey, before I don't used to be here, but I'm here right now. Means God loves me. <laughs> Praise God. <laughs> I don't used to be here before. It's a, it's a good step. Yeah, we used to have one beat on YouTube before, but right now 
people got more than a thousand is something to be grateful for. Glory be to God. Or maybe people I used to have one cup of water, now I have two cups of water to drink. I need to be thankful. Let me say this to you. Those who have expectation are thankful. And one of the ways your expectation is sustained is when you have a heart of gratitude. Look into your life, you will find a place where God has crossed before, where God has touched before, where God has helped you before. And let that become your inspiration for continuity. Let that become what keeps you going. Wow. Let that keep you going. So you have an expectation. We said one of the first law of miracles is the law of anything is possible. We went to talk about the second law. Uh, God's word can create anything. Then we talk about the law of expectation. We talk about the law of declaration. Now let's look at the law of declaration when it comes to the miraculous. The law of declaration. Now let me say this to you. If there is any message you need to be hearing all the time, is how to speak God's word. <laughs> Have you noticed? That sometimes you even forget to say it. Sometimes it's just like the day came and passed and you never spoke God's word that day. Declaration or confection keeps your expectation in the right direction. Declaration. It comes from a knowing in your spirit that with God all things are possible. Then you begin to speak it. You begin to say it. You begin to declare it. That was what happened in Romans chapter Romans chapter 4, verse 17. As it is written, I've made it the father of many nations before whom he believed. Even God who quickened the dead and called those things which be not as though they were, even God. Call those things. Are you calling those things? Are you calling those things? Those things you want to see. Those things you want to manifest. Are you really calling them? Or you're wishing they will show up? Well, you got to call them. Call them. Call them. He said, oh, apostle, I'm tired of doing that. No, you can't be tired of speaking the word of God. Practice this for more than 20 years. The word of God works. I practice this for more than 20 years. The word of God works. If there is anything that I'm sure of, I'm sure that the word will work. I'm sure that the word of God will not fail. I'm sure that the word of God will come true. I'm sure that the word of God will not fail, that the word of God is going to come true. I'm sure of that. And look at what happened here in Romans chapter 4, verse 18. Who against hope, who against hope believed in hope that he might become the father of many nations? Who against hope? That means something was against the hope. Then you now have a hope. Wow. Who against hope believed in hope? Wow. My dear. Who against hope believed? Who, who against hope believed in hope? Who against hope believed in hope? that he might become the father of many nations. According to that which was spoken, it was spoken as it, as it can be experienced. It was spoken as it can create expectation. Whenever God's word is spoken to you, it creates expectation. Whenever the word of God is spoken to you, it creates expectation. So you know what happened there? According to that which was spoken, so shall thy seed be. Verse 19. And he be, and, and be not weak in faith. This is important. Because one of the things that strengthen your expectation is when you walk by faith. I said, one of the things that strengthen your expectation is when you walk by faith. And faith comes by continuous hearing of the word of God. Yes. 
One of the things that strengthens your expectation is when you walk by faith. And faith comes by continuous hearing of God's word. Wow. Continuous hearing. <laughs> not just one time, not just twice a week, every day. Every day is a day for the word. That's why we've got finishworktv.com. As people could not say, oh, I don't have anything to listen to. The word, I watch it most of the time because the word of God is alive. I want to say that again. I said the word of God is alive. And he said here, and be not weak in faith because weak faith is a distraction to expectation. Weak faith is a distraction to your expectation. Weak faith is a distraction. When, when faith is weak, it is a proof that expectation is under attack. When faith is weak. How do you know that a person's faith is weak? They stop feeding on the word of God. That's the early sign that faith is going to be weak. They are no more reading their Bible. They are no more feeding on the word of God. They are overwhelmed by their problems. They are carried away by their need and their trouble. And right now, they are feeling frustrated. What am I going to do? No, those things open store for faith to be weak. But as you feed on the word of God, the who has there may be no money and all you got is just $10, $20. But if you're feeding your faith on God's word, that really doesn't really matter. Because in the next few seconds, that whole story can change. People don't have an idea. You can go from looking for one dollar to having a million dollar. People don't have an idea of what miracles are. Miracles are expression that exceed your natural expectations. Miracles are expressions that exceed your natural expectations. They are expressions from God that exceed your natural expectations. So, don't look at where you are. Look at what God's word has said. 2 Corinthians 5, example, we walk by faith and not by sight. <laughs> you know, that scripture means a lot to me. We walk by faith and, and not by sight. Hmm. How do we walk? We walk by faith and not by sight. Because when you concentrate on sight, your expectation will work. Because you're considering this, you're considering that, you're considering this, you're considering that. Stop considering those things. Start focusing on what God's word have said. And Abraham considered not. Let me read it to you, okay? Are you there? Romans chapter 4, verse 19. And being not weak in faith, he considered not. I like this. <laughs> <laughs> Praise God. <laughs> he considered not. How many people here to that? You're going to be walking like this. I refuse to consider that situation as a limitation. No, I'm not going to consider that situation anymore. He considered not his own body now dead. <laughs> the man's body was dead, but he considered it not. Wow. <laughs> he considered not. You know why? Because the word of God has overtaken the man. The revelation of what God will do has taken the place of any other situation. So here what happened was, and, and being not weak in faith, he considered not his own body not dead when he was about 100 years old. He considered not. Honey, consider it not. <laughs> Don't consider those things you're feeling. Like I was saying to some, I was sharing with some people today, I said, don't make your feeling the focus. Don't make the symptom the focus. Focus on the healing. Focus on I am healed. Don't focus on the symptoms. Oh, I still have this symptom in my body. Oh, I still have this. Oh, I still feel this. No, 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 no. Don't make the feeling and the symptom the focus. Focus on I am healed. 
So when you wake up tomorrow morning and you saw it, I am healed. You wake up the next day, you saw it, I am healed. It, let me share this text one with you. I mean, I mean, I'm so excited today. I don't know why. <laughs> but listen to this. <laughs> a woman got <laughs> a goiter, you know, and she was, she told her friends that uh, God has healed her of the goiter. God has healed her. God has taken it away. So her friends will tell her, why are you saying that God has taken it away, but we can't see it? Why are you saying God has taken it away? So she will go to the mirror and say, God, I know this is no more here, but God help my friends to see it. <laughs> wow. <laughs> so whenever she comes home and says, Lord, I thank you because I know it's no more here. Help my friends to see it. I'm not seeing it. And one day, her friends saw her and they couldn't find it anymore. That was when they saw it, but she saw it since. She has seen it long ago. So you prayed about healing and you wake up, you felt that same way. Don't focus on how you felt. Mm -hmm. Don't focus on how you felt. Mm -hmm. How you felt is not the word of God. <laughs> I'm not going to focus on feeling. I'm going to focus on I am healed. That settles it. If you wake up in the morning and you see the marks all over your body, I'm still healed. Amen. You wake up and you feel like it's getting worse. I'm still healed. Oh my God. And then someone will say, hey, are you sure you're healed? Yes, I'm healed. You know why those symptoms are resisting? Satan is trying to get you off the healing. Then the person that says, well, I, I, I don't think this is I've gone. Satan said, good, good. Yes, yes. It hasn't gone. It's there. Now Satan is preaching to the person. It has not gone. It's there. And as he begins to magnify it with those words, those things start regaining energy. This is what most people don't understand. I used to have a very severe pain. And sometimes the pain Pain could be uh, the situation could be very painful. Then I start speaking the word of God over it. I didn't even know when I was healed. <laughs> I didn't even know when I got my healing because after I spoke the word of God for a while, I was relaxed. So after <laughs> six months, that was when I get to know that I've been healed for long ago. <laughs> I think this is going to be an encouragement to someone believing. God for healing, so you speak to it. You speak to it. You speak to it. Don't be looking at it. It's not there. You speak to it. It's not there. You speak to it. Hallelujah. You speak to it. It's not there. You speak to it. It's not there. You speak to it. It's not there. You speak to it. Learn how to use God's word to cure your body, to heal your body. Wow, this is awesome. Wow. I hope somebody's getting an answer today. Somebody's getting some solution to what to do today. Hallelujah. This is, this is awesome. Listen to this. When Jesus looked at the tomb of Lazarus, he said, take the stone away. He said, Lazarus comforts. Wow. Which of the doctors can do that. Four days, dead. Ah, ah. Nobody does that. If anybody have that gift of doing that every day, you'll be the richest person in the whole world. Because you're going to raise all the rich business people uh, and you tell them you're doing me one million pounds. They say, that's not a problem. You raise the guy that, you, that started Apple. Is Apple were charging you 10 billion USD? He said, That's my problem. <laughs> Praise God. <laughs> you, you, do, do, do you see where else there? <laughs> I'm just telling you what Jesus did. Lazarus comfort. When he said Lazarus comfort, those words that Jesus spoke was life. The life entered into me. So when you speak to your body, okay. 
Wow, I wanted to show you this scripture. Can we do it? Our time is fast, but let's just do something. Amen. Let's go to Proverbs chapter 4. Praise the Lord. You know, sometimes you get excited sharing this word of God in Proverbs chapter 4. And I want to read verse 20. I will show you something. And then you try practicing it and see how it works for you. In Proverbs chapter 4, verse 20. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. In Proverbs 4, verse 20, look at what he said here. He said, my son, attend to my words. My son, attend to my words. Incline thy ear unto my saying. My son, attend. Give attention to my word. Look at verse 21. Let them not depart from your eyes. Then he said, keep them in the midst of thy heart. You will not have a heart trouble, heart problem. When you keep that word in your heart, you will have a heart trouble. <laughs> keep them in your spirit. Verse 22, for they are life unto those that find them and health to all their flesh. Wow. Did you see that? Proverbs chapter 4, verse 22, for they are life unto those that find them held to all their flesh. Held. So the word is held. So if you're taking it every day, the word of God is your medicine. Make sure you take your medicine every day. Make sure you take your medicine every day. And as you take it, your healing, your strength, your body will begin to improve. As we round up this teaching right now, let me show you these two things and then I'll be out. The next law of miracle is this. There is no limit into the help of the spirit. That's another law of miracles. There is no limit to the help of the spirit. There is no limit to the help of the spirit. Romans 8 verse 11. Romans 8 verse 11. A portion of it there is said, if the spirit that raised Jesus from the dead dwells in you, he will quicken. Romans 8 verse 11. He will quicken your mortal bodies. If the spirit that raised Jesus from the dead. So there is no limit to the help of the spirit. There is no limit. So if you want to see the miraculous, be sensitive to the Holy Ghost for instruction, for direction, and for correction. If you want to see the manifestation of the miraculous, be sensitive to the Holy Spirit for instruction, for direction, for correction. In John Gospel chapter 2, they went for, Jesus was invited to a wedding. And you know what happened in that wedding? Jesus was there and Mary came to the people and said they have run out of wine. And Jesus said, my time has not come. Then Mary applied the law of expectation and went and told the people, whatsoever he said to you, do it. That's the law of expectation. Walking with the law of declaration. He, he, he didn't bother Jesus. He didn't say, oh, Jesus, you're my son. Please go fix this thing. He she just went and applied the law of expectation and said, whatsoever he said to you, do it. Mary created expectation for those servants. So when Jesus showed up and said, fill the water pot, they didn't see Jesus as someone who doesn't know what he's saying. So they quickly filled the water pot because the law of expectation is already on motion. It's already on motion. And what happened? The miraculous. So there is no limit to the help of the Spirit. Now, the final law I'm going to share is the law of the released faith. The law of the released faith. The law of the released faith. Releasing your faith. You release your faith through words. Releasing your faith. Lord, I thank you because you're going to fix it. You're releasing your faith. You're believing God. You're standing on the word of God. 
releasing your faith. Releasing your faith. In Mark Gospel, chapter 2, wow. <laughs> Mark Gospel, chapter 2. I'm going to read it. If you read from verse 1 to verse 8, you will notice these guys came to Jesus. Those four men came to Jesus with their friend. And Jesus was preaching, was ministering. And their friend was paralyzed. And when they came to the place, the crowd was so much. What did they do? They went to the roof and they started opening the roof. And then they let down the guy. And the Bible said Jesus saw their faith. What is that? Released faith. They released their faith. And when faith is released, it does not return back empty. When faith, whenever faith is released, it doesn't return back empty. Except that faith was corrupted along the line by the person who is releasing the faith. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. So when faith is released, that was what happened to the woman of issue of blood. If I can touch, I'll be made whole. What happened? She released her faith. And what happened? She was healed. The same thing to blind Bartimaeus. He released his faith. Thou son of David, have mercy on me. He released his faith. Released faith will produce the miraculous. I pray that these principles we have shared is going to stay up for something big. I am healed. I don't have to feel it. I just have to believe it. <laughs> I am delivered. I don't have to feel it. I just have to believe it. <laughs> I am blessed. I don't have to feel it. I just have to believe it. <laughs> I am successful. I don't have to feel it. I just have to believe it. It has been restored. I don't have to feel it. But I just have to believe it. The greatest progress in life is when you have the revelation of God's word concerning a need in your life, something big will begin to happen. And there are many of us here, the Spirit of God is saying, I've given you answers. If you check your notes, if you listen to this broadcast over and over, you'll find answers by the Spirit. There are things you did not hear, but when you listen to this broadcast for the second time, you will hear them. Hallelujah. You will hear them. And then you say, wow, I didn't think about that. Because the Spirit of God took over. Anything is possible. Anything. Anything. Let's pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you right now. I pray for everyone connected to this broadcast all over the world, watching, receiving the word, that this word has come alive in their spirit. I pray you keep them. I pray you strengthen them. I pray you empower them. In the name of Jesus, I decree and I declare that the anointing of the Spirit of God will break every yoke and limitation around you. In the mighty name of Jesus, receive direction. Receive wisdom. Receive understanding. Receive the boldness to speak the word of God until there is a manifestation of that which God has spoken to you. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Holy Spirit, in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Glory to the Father. Glory to the Father. Hallelujah. 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 If you're watching this video, you can subscribe to our YouTube channel. It's Redman Teaching on YouTube. And also we encourage you to keep watching finishworktv.com. If you want to partner with this ministry, you can go to finishworktv.com. We love you until our next broadcast. Don't forget this. There is greatness in you, and Jesus is coming soon.